Oh, f Thinking of installing a mini split? I'm about to tell you 31 things you absolutely need to know that could make the difference between a successful project and a potential disaster. No. There were 80 days where the highs reached over 100 degrees here in Austin last year, and with no climate control in this shop, that made it almost impossible to get any work done. I got a quote to purchase a mini split and have it installed, and the installation alone was over $2,000. That's when I started looking into this Mr. Cool E Star series, which they advertise as a 100% DIY solution. It's right in the middle. Yeah. I did the installation myself, and to be honest, it was actually pretty easy. The secret is the pre-charged line set, the only one of its kind, which means I didn't need to call a high-priced HVAC tech, and that saved me a ton of cash. But I did identify some tricky spots and common mistakes that might make this project take a lot longer, or require more trips to the store, or, God forbid, have to call on a pro to fix your mistake. I'm not going to just walk you through installing a Mr. Cool Mini Split. In fact, in this video, I identify every potential issue you could possibly run into. And every time we get to one, you'll hear this sound and see some text on the screen explaining what to do. There are 31 of these in the video, and trust me, you don't want to miss any. So pay attention, rewind if you have to, maybe even take notes. Oh, and let me know in the comments if you think I missed any. Let's do this. Hi everybody, hola amigos, Lee here from Busted Knuckle Woodworks. My very first tip, and this really applies to any project, not just this one, is to just use common sense. As instruction manuals go, this one is pretty good, but when assembling anything of any complexity, you're bound to run into things that don't seem to make sense, steps that seem out of order, or instructions that are just plain confusing. When that happens, step back, take a breath, and reevaluate. Reread the instructions, think about the process, and don't proceed until you fully understand what you're expected to do. Messing up a step may set you back hours, so engage your brain, be alert and aware, and don't rush. It's not a race. You don't have to finish it all in one day. Second, gather everything you need before you start. With a Mr. Cool unit, most everything is included, but there are a few small tools of your own you'll need to bring to the job, and a few supplies they don't include that will make this a bit easier. I've included a list in the description of everything you'll definitely need, some things you might need depending on your situation, and a few things that are optional, but will make this job go a lot smoother. You want to choose the right location for the indoor air handler. Good air circulation is absolutely key. I've got this shelf here, which isn't ideal, but I'm going to remove it once I get all this done. These are designed to be installed on an exterior facing wall with a line set that contains the refrigerant routing directly to the condenser outside. Speaking of which, at this point, you should already be planning the approximate location of that outside unit as well. Determine the location from a fixed point, like a wall or a doorway, so there won't be any surprises when you drill through that wall and find it comes out where you didn't expect it to. They include this handy cardboard template to assist in mounting the air handler bracket. And even though there are warnings printed all over it, it is only cardboard, so if you're not paying attention, you might accidentally throw it away. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but the template does take a lot of the guesswork out of laying out your mounting location. The cardboard template has two spots marked US. These mounting point locations are 16 inches apart, which is the US standard spacing for stud framing. And that brings up another point. You absolutely, positively must mount this unit to studs. Do not attempt to use drywall anchors for this. That absolutely will not work it's critical to ensure the template is absolutely level. There's a condensation pan inside the air handler, and it needs to be level to ensure proper drainage. 
I wanted to mount this as high as possible for maximum coverage, keeping in mind that the unit does require a minimum of 6 inches of overhead clearance, as well as about 5 inches on either side. And before you settle on a final spot, find the line set access hole location on the right side of the template and check that area for any plumbing, wiring, or framing that might get in your way. Cut through one of those and you'll definitely have a new project on your hands you weren't counting on. Next, it's time to find that mounting bracket. This might be a little confusing because it actually comes attached to the air handler itself with a single screw. Just remove that screw and you're good to go. Here's a good tip. Study how the unit actually attaches to the bracket before you mount it. Once it's on the wall, you won't be able to see what's happening back there. And note that you can shift it an inch or two to the left or right if you need to. Whatever you do when attaching this mounting plate to the wall, do not use the tiny screws they give you in the box. Grab yourself some hefty construction screws. I'm using two and a half inch screws here, which is plenty. And be sure to check for level one more time before attaching that second screw. Next, you'll create an access hole for the line set through the wall. Don't try to drill this hole all the way through from the inside in one go. I suggest you drill the inside part first, then drill from the outside to complete the job. You'll end up with a much cleaner hole that way. To cut the inside part, take your 3.5 inch hole saw and drill straight in until you penetrate the drywall. Now, here's the trick. Attach a long bit, then angle it slightly downward and drill a pilot hole from the inside to the outside. You don't want to angle it too far. Just make it so that your exterior hole will be about a half inch or so lower than the interior hole. This serves two purposes. First, it will allow you to use a less severe bend to route the line set to the outside. And second, it'll help ensure proper drainage from the indoor unit. By the way, don't freak out if you have a brick or masonry exterior like I do. You'll just need a core saw bit designed for this purpose. I left a link in the description to the one I used. Mr. Cool includes a PVC sleeve to line the hole. Slide it into the opening from the inside. The flat spot on the flange is there to compensate for the fact that your hole should be angled downward, so make sure that goes on the top. For most installations, this sleeve will be a bit too long, so just do a test fit, mark it, remove it, and cut off the excess so that the end will be flush with the exterior. As you can see in my case, however, it was actually too short. Luckily, the flange they supply to finish it off should reach in far enough to cover the shortfall. You'll need to prepare the indoor unit piping to be routed outside. The line set feed pipe is located near the bottom of the unit and needs to be bent straight out in preparation for mounting the unit to the wall. There's also a drain pipe here and the placement of the drain pipe relative to the line set is very important. We'll get to that in a second. Hold the piping near where it attaches to the unit and very slowly, using even pressure, bend the piping away from the back of the unit about 90 degrees. Once this is done, it should be sticking straight out from the back, like this. Then, take the refrigerant piping and the drain line and lightly tape them together, ensuring that the drain line is on the bottom. This is really important. Water doesn't run uphill and you don't want to create a trap or have standing water in this line. Now, I'm not going to lie, this next step was, for me, the most stressful part of the whole project. Feeding the piping through the hole and mounting the unit to the wall bracket. I definitely suggest you get help with this step. I had lined up a helper, but they backed out at the last minute and I had a video to finish. So I did this alone and I nearly ended up regretting that decision. And without the existing shelf here, it would have been impossible. So congratulations, you're halfway done, and now it's time to turn your attention to the other side of this wall. They don't mention anything in the manual about sealing this flange, but I recommend that you do. I really like this quad stuff. I'll leave a link to it in the description. There are three generally practiced methods for mounting the compressor unit. In my opinion, probably the most preferable is fixing it to a concrete pad. And quite honestly, I still may end up doing that, but for now I opted to try the bracket method. The bracket has the advantage of raising the unit up and away from dirt, debris, and snow accumulation if you get any snow, and may be desirable in situations where your installation is on an upper story. The other option I've seen is to fix it to a PVC pad that just lies on the ground. This is by far the least secure, and frankly, I don't recommend this method at all. Whichever method you choose, ensure that you maintain suitable clearance above, behind, in front of, and on both sides of the unit. 
Now, Mr. Cool recommends a minimum of six inches from the wall for the bracket mount option, but in my opinion, that is way too close. You wanna go 10 inches at minimum, or even a foot or more if you have the room. Otherwise, you will never make this bend for the line set piping. Trust me, do not go by what they say in the manual, it's just wrong. Once you've mounted the unit, be sure to install the drain outlet. Most videos I've seen don't even show this, which means you might be tempted to skip it, but don't. In the winter, if you're using this for heating, it will collect water. Now, place your hand on the underside of the piping close to the opening, then slowly and with even pressure, bend the piping down until it's flat against the wall. Once that's done, it's a good time to go ahead and finish sealing up this hole. You want to keep insects and the elements from getting in here. They give you a little package of neoprene, but I like to use spray foam. I find it easier and a lot more effective. The 25-foot line set comes coiled inside the box with the condenser. The key here is to only unwind as much of the line set as necessary to reach from the fittings down to the condenser. Just measure the distance, then with a the line set lying on the ground, deploy only the necessary length, leaving the excess coiled. You should now be ready to attach the line set to the indoor piping. Remove the plastic caps and line up the fittings. These are different sizes and it only fits one way, so you shouldn't have any trouble identifying which line goes to which fitting. Always start the first few threads by hand. It's critical that you line these up perfectly, which, trust me, is a lot easier said than done. These lines are very stiff and they will fight you. Just take your time getting it started and make absolutely sure you haven't cross-threaded anything. Then use your wrenches to finish tightening them up, making sure the threads stay aligned throughout the entire process. The connections to the condenser work pretty much the same way. This bend can be kind of tricky, so take your time with it. You want to minimize the stress on these connectors. Once you have those hooked up, remove the valve covers, then use a 5mm hex key to open up the refrigerant valves. If you listen closely, you'll hear the refrigerant being released from the line set. Open these up all the way. Just keep turning until they stop. Use a soapy water solution to detect any leaks that may occur. Spray it or brush it on and make sure you don't see any bubbles. Keep that bottle handy. We'll need it again later. Here's another handy tip. You might be tempted to add some Teflon tape or other kind of thread sealant to these. Definitely don't do that. It isn't needed and may actually make these more likely to leak over time. Wrap the upper connections with these sound deadening pads they give you. Just remove the paper backing and wrap it around each of them one at a time. You can just mold it with your hands like Play-Doh. Finally, go ahead and wrap the upper part of the refrigerant line. Oddly enough, this is another step I've seen people skip. They give you some plastic tape for this in the box, but unfortunately, this stuff doesn't stick to itself or anything else. I recommend a good all-weather duct tape instead. Not regular duct tape, all-weather tape. I'll leave a link to the stuff I used in the description. Wiring the indoor unit to the outdoor unit really couldn't be any more foolproof. There are three terminals on the left labeled 1, 2, and 3, and the three wires in the conduit are labeled 1, 2, and 3. All you need to do is to connect the wire labeled 1 to the terminal labeled 1, 2 to 2, and 3 to 3. Pretty simple. Now you're ready to get power to this thing. You'll notice here that I have my 220 circuit routed to this AC disconnect box. The main purpose of this is to be able to service this unit without needing access to the inside of your house to turn off the circuit breaker. And I suggest you get one. These aren't very expensive, usually under $15 or so. I'll put a link to the one I used in the description. In this box, these middle screws are the line terminals. That means incoming. And the outside ones are the load terminals. That means outgoing. So I've wired my incoming 220 to these middle terminals and the ground to this ground block. With a 220 circuit, you'll always have two lines. So it's standard practice to wrap the white wire with red tape to indicate that it's actually live and not a neutral. Now, here's something I don't quite understand. For this 24K unit, Mr. Cool recommends using 8-gauge wire, but these terminals are really a bit too small to easily accept 8-gauge wire. And the opening for the whip is only half an inch, and 8-gauge whips do not come that small. So I had to drill this out to 3 quarters. So that's something to be aware of on the larger models. 
It should go without saying that if at any point there's something you don't understand or you don't feel comfortable, just stop. Don't try to guess or bluff your way through this. That's not smart. Call a pro if you have to. No shame in that. Once this is all wired up, it should look like this. Go ahead and insert the disconnect block, flip on the breaker, and let's get ready to test this thing. Take the remote and press the yellow power button to turn it on. Then switch the mode to heat and crank it up as high as it will go. It'll take a minute or two to heat up. Let it run for at least five minutes. By then you should start to really feel some heat coming out of this thing. Then switch it to cool mode and lower the temperature as low as it will go. Run it for another five minutes. Check that it's blowing cold air. Now that the system has cycled a couple of times, the pressure in the lines will have changed, so you definitely want to take that soapy solution you used before and check these fittings for leaks one more time. So now you're basically done, but I don't think this looks done. So let's take care of that. Mr. Cool sells this line guard line set cover kit that you can use to tidy this all up. It has lots of fittings and comes with everything you need to make this look attractive and hopefully keep your HOA from complaining. Just attach the back and the front part snaps right on. The final step, and this is totally optional of course, is to install the smart controller module which lets you entirely personalize the operation of your Mr. Cool with an app on your phone. It uses geolocation that lets you turn off the system when you leave and back on when you arrive, set weekly schedules, monitor usage history, set up custom rules for operation, and a lot more. This is definitely worth checking out. Now obviously I can't give you a longevity review here. I just installed this thing. But let me offer a few opinions on the install process and some general first impressions. First, and this is really the most important thing, it works awesome. Here in Texas, we've been under that so-called heat dome while the weather people talk about. It's been in the mid to high 90s for days, and the Mr. Cool has absolutely no problem maintaining a comfortable 72 degrees in this shop. Another thing that impressed me, it's super quiet. And this was really important to me because I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to run this while making YouTube videos in here. But it's running right now, I'm standing right next to it, and you can barely hear this. Third, the installation process is actually pretty straightforward. The manual was really good for the most part, and I was able to do it all by myself. Although I do suggest getting someone to help you, especially when mounting the inside unit. One important thing you shouldn't overlook is that this thing isn't just an air conditioner, it's also a heat pump and a dehumidifier. And sometimes I just run it in that dry only dehumidifier mode, and that's more than enough to keep things comfortable in here. I personally feel this Mr. Cool is a great investment. First, it's totally DIY, which saves you a ton of money right off the top. I've already talked about that. But also, I think a Mr. Cool Mini Split actually pays for itself merely in terms of increased productivity. You'll be more comfortable, which means you can spend more time in the shop, which means getting more work done, which means more money. You get the idea. You can do math. Before we go, I want to thank Mr. Cool for providing this unit so I could bring you this video. And I want to invite you all to check out my new Patreon. It's free to join, we show a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and we have a lot of fun, so check it out. I'm Lee from Busted Knuckle Woodworks, Adios amigos.